for those of you that are just joining us, um, again, my name is Ricky Gaines, and I'm the, the Human Rights Policy and Advocacy Lead at the Wikimedia Foundation, and I led our work on our Child Rights Impact Assessment, which I will uh, be discussing today. Um, very quickly, just to kind of frame this conversation, I, I would like to kind of propose two questions for you to keep in mind as, as we are, um, as I'm sharing this presentation with you. The first is, what is the role of children in relation to the Wikimedia movement? And how can the movement keep children safe? Here we go. Um, so as I mentioned, the, the Wikimedia Foundation conducted a child rights impact assessment last year, uh, which we uh, published um, earlier this year in January. And once I'm finished and kind of have my windows back <laughs> in a normal way, I'll, I'll share with you the link to that child rights impact assessment report so you can review it. Um, why did we commission this report? Well, in 2021, in December of 2021, the foundation and the board adopted our human rights policy, um, which committed us to protect and uphold the, the human rights of all those that interact with Wikimedia projects. Um, in 2020, um, prior to that uh, human rights policy being adopted, uh, we, the foundation, carried out a human rights impact assessment that looked across all of the foundation's operations and all of the movement's activities at a global scale. And one of the specific recommendations of that report was to carry out a child rights impact assessment to better understand the specific risks that children face on Wikimedia projects. Um, this also came at an important time as we think about public policy around the world, so laws and regulations, because there's growing interest among governments um, to legislate and regulate in order to uh, keep children safe online. So what did this report evaluate? Um, it, it evaluated opportunities for children and for the purposes of this report, we are um, defining children as um, users or you know, people under the age of 18. We understand that children and youth can have different meanings in different cultural contexts, but for the purposes of this report, we're focusing on those under 18, so sort of the most vulnerable um, kind of segment of that population. Um, so it looked at opportunities, so the, the benefits that children can have by, by having access to Wikimedia projects, as well as the risks that they can face for, for having access to and participating in these projects. And it resulted in a, a report that assessed how the movement and the foundation manages child-related risks and provides a series of actionable recommendations. Um, in terms of kind of how this report um, conducted its analysis, um, it, it grouped or categorized children into three different groups. So the first group, which is sort of the, the one of the, I think kind of the primary focuses of, of the report was child editors. So those would be volunteers who are editing, adding and editing and contributing content to Wikimedia projects. Um, the next group would be in-person participants. So these would be children that are participating in you know in-person offline events that are organized through the foundation or affiliates and then the third and of course the biggest uh, group is the general public so these would be children that are sort of passively reading content on wikipedia or browsing other content on other wikimedia pages uh, for educational purposes or just you know the purposes of, of learning about things um, on their own the report identified a number of uh, benefits and opportunities to children. So it's it's important for this report to, to in order to help us kind of holistically understand um, what our relation or what the movement's relationship to children is, kind of the benefits that they can receive um, by being involved. Um, I've organized this slide to kind of show you like the nucleus, you know, what are the most central uh, benefits and opportunities that children receive immediately. Um, and then kind of moving out from there, the secondary and third order uh, benefits that they also receive as well. So, so kind of most centrally, one of the most central benefits is the, the ability to exercise their freedom of expression, uh, which um, is defined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights as the ability to seek, receive, and impart ideas um, regardless of borders and without barriers. Uh, so this, of course, directly relates to the right to access information. And also, you know, the ability to participate in our movement um, impacts their ability to exercise their freedom of association as well. Um, kind of moving outwards to, to the secondary 
uh, benefits that children receive. Our you know, access to Wikimedia projects um, improves their ability to exercise their rights to education and development, as well as their rights to participate in civic, cultural, social, and political lives in their own communities offline. Um, importantly, kind of the an, another benefit, and this is not an exhaustive list of all benefits, but these are sort of what I think are the most central and important ones. The the kind of high high level overarching benefit is the lifelong benefit that children receive um, that relates to their to, to economic opportunities later in life and self esteem. So when a child is able to participate actively in, in Wikimedia projects as an editor or a contributor um, or a volunteer in other capacities, um, they learn skills about uh, research, about writing, um, about citing their sources, all of things which directly uh, impact their um, you know, scholastic performance outside of Wikimedia projects. Um, to an extent, they can learn how to uh, code um, and, and do other things online. It increases their sort of media literacy and their computer and internet literacy as well. Uh, so all of those tangible benefits follow them through life and can improve uh, their access to um, you know, educational and um, occupational benefits later on. Um, also being able to participate in a movement that has um, sort of a higher purpose than themselves. You know, we're, we're all working together to advance the, the sum of all human knowledge. Um, the opportunity to, to take on leadership roles within their communities helps to build their self-esteem and helps to grow leadership abilities, which again, follow them through life and help them to, to become leaders in their own communities, um, in their own occupations, at university, et cetera. So, so really, you know, th these benefits start kind of um, immediately at their computer where they're, um, you know, they're exercising their freedom of expression, but they really follow them through life in really impactful ways. Um, but access to Wikimedia projects is not without risk for children. And, and no one on this call right now should be surprised by that because there are risks inherent to, to doing anything on the internet, but it's important that we identify these risks so we can also begin taking steps to, to reduce these risks as much as we can. Um, I also wanna highlight that these risks are not necessarily unique to children but children experience them in unique ways and they um, you know, impact children perhaps uh, disproportionately or in different ways than they might um, affect adults. So of course, children can be exposed to harassment and bullying on Wikimedia projects. Um, adults can also be exposed to harassment and bullying, but you can imagine the profound impact that that can have on a child um, who's early on in their development and still trying to figure out kind of who they are, you know, what their role in the world is and kind of, you know, um, how they deal with, with, with these sorts of encounters. Um, children can also uh, be exposed to harmful content and misrepresentation of facts. So this could be anything, you know, um, ranging from, let's say, uh, information on uh, suicide methods, which is on English Wikipedia. Um, it can also um, include exposure to disinformation. Um, children, because, you know, of where they are in their, in their development, they probably have a harder time um, uh, sort of identifying, you know, what, what is fact and what is opinion. Also, you know, identifying what is potentially misinformation or disinformation and being able to differentiate between that and make their own judgment about um, content that they're um, encountering. Um, children can also experience infringements on their right to privacy. Um, children have sort of a, a uh, perhaps a lower understanding of what sort of information ought to be published about themselves online in order to protect their privacy. Um, they may not understand that by sharing certain details, um, it would be easy for a stranger out there to, to identify who they are. Um, they might not understand that their username should be something totally unrelated to their personality or, you know, their person rather than, you know, their name or first name or last name or some sort of other identifying characteristic. So these things can have negative impacts on their right to privacy when sort of uh, malicious actors or the bad guys out there are looking to, to exploit that. Um, Children can also experience harmful contact. Um, so, so Zico, you gave a really fascinating example earlier about how, um, you know, what is seemingly innocent, innocent information could actually be an attempt 
to engage in harmful contact with a minor in order to uh, kind of begin the grooming process in, in an area where, uh, you know, that is non-public. Um, there's also, you know, child exploitation issues. Um, so CSAM, which is um, child sexual abuse material, um, th that is also, you know, that's very harmful for children to encounter. But this report also uh, considers that um, it is, you know, it's very problematic and incredibly damaging for, for the children that may be depicted um, in those sorts of images. Um, on Wikimedia projects, children can also um, experience discrimination and non-equity due to, you know, their personal characteristics, whether it's uh, gender, race, religion, or perhaps their, their perceived status as a child or a minor on, our, uh, on these projects. Um, they are challenged by inaccessibility and inequity. Um, so perhaps, you know, um, they have a hard time kind of accessing the or understanding the terms of use and privacy policies on our projects because they're written in very high level legal jargon that sometimes adults like me have a difficult time understanding and as children they certainly do as well um, and because you know children sometimes engage in our projects as you know anonymously um, without sort of getting or you know without the ability to really engage you know, live virtually because of their children and they may not feel comfortable doing so. They have, uh, they deal with the, the impacts of having a lack of voice in the movement. So, you know, they're not really able to speak up in public fora openly to talk about their experience as, as minors on Wikimedia projects in order to contribute to conversations, solutions and, um, and the like within our community. And then finally, um, inadequate access to remedy. This is just a fancy way of saying that sometimes they have a hard time accessing um, the the processes and channels to report problems and to to have issues resolved on their behalf because these these processes can be complex and the processes and the documents outlining them are also complex and difficult for children to understand. So as I stated at the beginning, this report was both analyzing these challenges and opportunities, but also provided a number of recommendations. Um, here I've got seven that I think it's important to highlight, um, some of which we've uh, begun taking action on, others not. Um, the report contains a number of recommendations um, beyond these seven, uh, but going through that would take up a lot, of, uh, a lot of time and I just wanna highlight kind of some high level things. So the first, developing a ch child safeguarding policy, regularly identifying risks to children, and making a single team within the foundation responsible for child safety and child rights. Uh, the second recommendation, developing a child-friendly complaints and reporting mechanism, along with uh, sufficient resources to, um, to make that process work. Number three, evaluating the Wikimedia 2030 movement strategy through a child rights lens. Number four, partnering with child experts and other organizations um, working on supporting child rights online. Five, empower children to protect themselves by providing child-friendly resources and tools. So that would be resources and tools that are actually easy for children to understand kind of at their reading level, but in their own language. Um, number six, integrating child children's voices into the foundation's approach to product development and design. And finally, engaging with governments on regulations and policies that uh, affect uh, children's uh, children on online. Um, so this this all begs the question: you know, what has the foundation um, done um, in order to address these recommendations since we received the report? Uh, we have published a new policy um, earlier this year, which is called the Combating Online Child Exploitation Policy, um, which I can after I finish up here, I'll put the link to that um, in the chat so you can check that out. Um, that same policy provides some easy to understand recommendations for children to actually protect themselves and to report problems. Um, the foundation has continued to support the development of the incident reporting system. We've begun including child rights considerations in reviews of uh, recent grant applications. Um, we've identified and documented activities um, and initiatives occurring within the with media communities and the broader movement that are working to empower and protect children on our projects. Uh, we've improved the structure and governance of um, the Foundation Human Rights Steering Committee to really be more responsive to, to handling uh, some of these recommendations and these broader issues that we are being called upon to, to address. 
And finally, we've designated our current staff members to lead child safeguarding efforts within the foundation's trust and safety team. So where do we go from here? This is a long-term conversation that needs to be had kind of among the volunteer community and, and with the foundation. We need to achieve you know, broad understanding among volunteers and encourage community leadership in addressing many of these issues and taking up some of these recommendations. And, and I'm here today because I think that the, the EduWiki user group um, is in a really great spot to, to kind of lead in some of these areas and, 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 and help this conversation advance, just because this is the user group that I think is probably the most likely to, to really come into contact with, uh, with uh, users under the age of 18. And so um, I invite you all to welcome your questions, but I also invite you to participate in an upcoming session we'll have on the same topic um, at Wikimania in August.